Thank you, candidates for graduation. You <laughs> follow directions very well. You may be seated. Welcome to the 91st Commencement Exercises of Fredonia Central School. I'm Darren Paschke, and this will be the 31st time I've attended Fredonia's graduation ceremonies, including my own, in 1987. However, it is a great honor and a privilege to attend this commencement ceremony and represent our district as the high school principal. I'm especially thankful to be able to return to this beautiful venue. I need to say thank you to the staff and administration at Fredonia College who worked with us to make this possible once again. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the individuals on stage. Please stand when I call your name. To my left in the first row, Mr. Greg Lauer, Assistant High School Principal. Ms. Erin Schrantz, Salutatorian. Ms. Eva Rose Wink, Valedictorian. Mrs. Gina Davis, School Counselor. Mr. Stephen Romans, School Counselor. To my right in the first row, Dr. Brad Ziliak, Superintendent of Schools. Dr. Sarah De Palma, our commencement speaker. Mr. Brian Aldrich, Board of Education President. Mr. Steve Johnston, Board of Education member. <laughs> to my right in the second row, Dr. Margie Wright, Chief Officer of Curriculum and Human Resources. <laughs> Mrs. Sheila Hahn, Board of Education member. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Hawk, Board of Education Vice President. <laughs> Mr. Aaron Marshall, the Board of Education member. To my right in the third row, Mr. Rory Dillon, student performer. Mr. Fred Gullo, student council president and student performer. And Ms. Lauren Sirkew, senior class president and student performer. We'd also like to recognize board members, Mrs. Lisa Fortna and Mrs. Courtney Gullo, who decided to sit with their family as they may have some graduates here today. <laughs> Fredonia High School is a public school that belongs to all of us. Our students who aspire, as each of us should, to be their best selves. To the innovative and hardworking families, including moms, dads, aunts and uncles, grandparents, and others who support students. And Fredonia High School belongs to the educators. And by educators, I include every adult in our building. They ensure that all students from every background are included, feel connected to our school, and are provided with ongoing opportunities to lead fulfilling lives after they leave high school. In 2019, just prior to the pandemic, Fredonia High School was recognized as one of 362 total schools in the nation, one of only 75 high schools in the country to receive the National Blue Ribbon School designation, the highest honor given to a school by the United States Department of Education. That was a tremendous honor, but it is also important that we check up on ourselves periodically to see if that's what we are, a Blue Ribbon School. Strong and positive accomplishments are something to build on, not rest on. As an optimist, one of the many positives that come out of the pandemic is perspective, seeing life through a new lens. We were granted, or some would say that we are forced, into reflecting on what is the most important to each of us in all aspects of our life. As we are now emerging from the pandemic and trying to hit the normal button, we are finding that there are barriers to normal. Some of these barriers are very real, mental health, poverty, job loss, gaps in learning, and weaker social skills. 
as a school and as a, and as a society, we are attempting to support our students and one another through these barriers the best ways that we know how. However, some barriers are self-created and frankly need to be eliminated. We are at a crossroads where we could choose to allow circumstances to dictate our perspectives. But by changing our perspectives, as many of the award-winning scholars, spectacular athletes, amazing musicians, skilled career and technical workers, and those entering the United States Armed Forces sitting in front of me have, we can change the narrative from excuses to positive results. How often have we heard, well, you know, I haven't really done what I should, but you know, COVID and everything. With a change in perspective, that could be, yes, we had a challenging time during COVID, but I'm making positive progress to grow better than I was before. We can change the, I don't know what we're going to do with the high gas prices and the high inflation, to, you know what, my needs are supplied and I'm making better decisions in my finances. And this one has become extremely common when someone is trying to be helpful to us by correcting us in some way. Now, I know none of us like to be corrected, but oftentimes I'm hearing all over society, oh, that person disrespected me, but when all they were doing was trying to help. If we could change that narrative, we could simply respond with, thank you. That's an area that I'm working on growing. Challenging circumstances require integrity, character, and usually a healthy dose of grit and work ethic to push through to the other side. Making excuses and being easily offended is the enemy of each of these ideals. I urge each of our graduates and everyone listening to walk out of this commencement hall, not right now, <laughs> but walk out of this commencement hall and leave your excuses here. You can be kind and place them in the garbage on your way out or be a bit sneaky and just slide them under your seat, but leave them. I expect that many of our graduates will be doing just that. On Friday, we practice standing and sitting together as an entire class. If I could ask the candidates, you guys ready? Will the candidates please rise? It's okay, it was okay. Now, while I have you up, if you would do a 180-degree turn and face the audience. And now, candidates for graduation, it is your turn to clap for all of those in the audience who have helped you get this far. You all deserve that, that standing ovation from our kids. Thank you for all that you do for them. Candidates, you can turn back around and be seated. I also need to take a moment to thank my favorite graduate of Fredonia High School, my wife from the class of 1987, who has been incredibly patient, understanding, loving, and supportive during the many extra hours that it has taken to help heal our, our school community the past two years. If there is any good work that I've been lucky enough to have been a part of, is because of her and her shared belief to put others' needs before our own. Thank you. It is now my honor to begin the celebration of the successful young men and women of courage, strength, pride, success, intelligence, and character that we see before us. I call Ms. Erin Schrantz, our Student Council Vice President and Salutatorian, to welcome everyone to the 91st Commencement Exercises of Fredonia High School. Erin? Good afternoon, everyone. Members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Ziliox, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Lauer, teachers and faculty, honored guests, friends, family, and of course, my fellow 2022 graduates, welcome. My name is Erin Trantz, and I am the Student Body Vice President for the 2021-2022 Fredonia High School school year. I am honored to welcome you all to our, our commencement celebration today. We are gathered here today to celebrate the class of 2022. We will soon thank our teachers, parents, administrators, and our friends and families who have helped us succeed. 
We, graduates, are taking the next spin and advancing in the game of life. The wait is over. It's finally time. But why does the game of life place such a large stop sign on graduation day? Why the wait? It is because the commencement ceremonies here today are symbolic. Graduation day is not only a major milestone on our life timeline, it symbolizes a major change in our lives and invites us to embrace that change with open arms. It is so important to take a second and acknowledge all that we have accomplished individually and collectively. So, we made it. We're walking across the big stage as we're handed a piece of paper that signifies all of the hard work and dedication we've put in these past four years. Now is the time when we can all kick back and relax, right? The hard work is over. Wrong. Now is the time to kick it into high gear. We've spun the wheel and we've decided whether we will choose the college or career pathway. Regardless of which pathway you choose, it is time to start setting new goals. Graduation, while it is the end, is also the beginning. We emerge from our high school cocoon ready to fly off and conquer whatever life has in store for us. While the sun has set on our high school careers, the magnificent colors that remain in the sky are the reason we are all here. There is beauty in the graduation ceremony and the times we will spend together this summer saying our last goodbyes. While it is the end, it is the beginning. After reflecting on our time as high schoolers today, we will turn the page in our book of life to a blank one where we are free to write our own destinies. I would like to welcome you all to our celebration today. Class of 2022, I would like to welcome you to the rest of your lives. We are all well prepared and I know we are ready for this journey. Thank you. Good afternoon. We are here today to, to present the Ricky Bergstrom Music and Bowling Scholarship. It is our privilege to acknowledge three members of this graduating class. Our son Ricky was a typical student, complaining about school, but always ready, prepared, and on time for class. Ricky was a lifelong learner, but took pride in being diverse and open to a challenge. He was an honor student that completed the 313 program at Fenelia State University and was a candidate for August graduation at Canisius College with his MBA. Ricky was motivated, working part-time at Rite Aid, being a licensed real estate agent, and most importantly, starting his own business, Burger's Kicks. Burger's Kicks was a successful business that introduced Ricky to the sneakers community. Ricky prided himself in friendships. He saw the good in everyone and developed a vast network of contacts throughout the United States and the world. The generosity of these people has led to the establishment of three scholarships. The selection committee was asked to identify individuals that went beyond being a high school student. We looked for student learners that displayed leadership through example. We identified three students that reflect these qualities. We would ask the following students to join us here on stage. Actually, two of them are already here. Aaron Elizabeth Schrantz, Benjamin William Moreau, and Fred Edward Gullo. Each of these applicants was asked to write a short essay explaining how they match the criteria of a modest, friendly, uplifting, and welcoming nature. All of the applicants spoke with their, their experiences in the many clubs, organizations, and sports at high school. Most wrote about work experiences and family endearments endeavorments. All three of these students are a great reflection of the quality of this graduating class. Aaron? Aaron Elizabeth Schrantz wrote about her experience involving the volleyball team and the acknowledgement that she received for her, and I quote, picking up my, up my teammates and pushing them to keep going. Her closing statement was, make your mark one that brings light into the world. Thank you, Aaron, for your efforts in helping and leading others to do their best. Ben, Benjamin William Morrow 
wrote about his experiences with the youth at Russell Joy Park. He noted that it is essential to always be, and I quote, exceedingly friendly and welcoming. Thank you, Ben, for taking the time and effort to involve all the participants in such an open and honest approach. Thank you. And Fred. Fred Edward Gullo's opening paragraph stated, and I quote, it seems a bit conflicting to write an essay with the purpose of showcasing my attributes of modesty and kindness. It is also humbling to write an essay for a scholarship in memory of such a friendly and well-liked young man. And thank you for those comments. We loved hearing about Fred's participation as a player coach in unified basketball and his advisement of the importance of, and I quote, being patient and kind to everyone. Thank you, Fred, for displaying these needed qualities. If I could just make one last statement, I hope that each graduating student will take a few minutes today to express to their parents and other guiding adults a thank you for assisting them in achieving this milestone in their education. And to the parents of significant adults, spend a few minutes expressing to your son or daughter the pride you have for their accomplishment and continue to be a part of their future. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First off, I wanted to congratulate the class of 2022. Throughout these past four years, you've all had to persevere and overcome so much during these trying times. You should all be very proud to walk across the stage today. It's my honor and privilege to present this year's Thomas M. Heary Memorial Scholarship Award. I'm here today to present this award alongside my mother, Maura. Thomas Heary is my grandfather, Grandpa Heary. He passed away 29 years ago from complications to CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. He was the principal at Fredonia High School from 1972 until he passed away in January of 1993. He was only 54 years old. I was born a couple of years shortly after his passing, so, yep, unfortunately, I never had the privilege of meeting my grandfather. Though the thing is, after all the family reunions and holidays spent here in Fredonia, where Quite honestly, I spent most of it eating all my grandma's food. Sorry, Grandma, I know you're watching, but I had to give you a little shout out. <laughs> but now, in all seriousness, hearing all the Tom Heary stories, I feel like I've known him my entire life. For those who have seen the movie The Sandlot, there's a line near the end that rings especially true when I think of my Grandpa Heary. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Tom Heary was a hero in this community and is 100% certainly still a legend. He was, in every essence of the word, a leader. He was strong, confident, smart, caring, and compassionate. He was a family man. His wife and four children were his pride and joy. As a leader of the Fredonia High School community, he led with class and was strong-willed. He encouraged you to work hard in the classroom, set ambitious goals, be respectful, and treat others the way you wanted to be treated. Simply put, Grandpa Heary was Fredonia. He was kind, hardworking, resilient, and tough. After all, the man fought his battle with cancer for six years, and each and every single day, he continued to come to work as the principal of FHS with a smile on his face and a desire to serve this community. You could always find his office door open 
pop in, ask him a question, talk about life, talk about anything. He was there and he truly cared. The winner of this year's Thomas M. Heary Scholarship Award has demonstrated all these qualities, not only as a leader, but as a person. The committee was strong-willed in their belief that this graduate will transition into college and continue to grow and develop themselves and their leadership skills, which will allow them to become the best version of themselves. I'm proud to present this year's Thomas M. Heary Scholarship Award to Ashley Helwig. Good afternoon, administrators, Board of Education members, parents and guests, family and friends, and of course, the graduating class of 2022. My name is Greg Haas, and I'm a technology and engineering teacher here at Fredonia High School. It is my honor to be here to present the Roger Pecos Memorial Scholarship. On November 1st, 2020, we lost a colleague, a teacher, a coach, a leader, brother, son, father, and a dear friend, Roger Pecos. Roger had many titles during his career at Fredonia Central School District. They included Fredonia Technology Engineering uh, teacher, high school bowling coach, Fredonia Teachers Association president, principal at the STEP program, assistant principal at the high school, student council advisor, and instructional leader for the career preparation department. Roger also served his community in many different ways. He volunteered with the Fronia Recreation Department. He was a board member or village trustee until his passing. The co-principal and a volunteer at Northern Chautauqua Catholic School. A coach with Lucky Lane's Junior Bowling. A treasurer at the First Ward Falcon Club and a volunteer fire police. I had the opportunity to be Roger's student teacher in the fall of 1998. The next year I was hired here at Fredonia and had the privilege of working alongside him as a technology and engineering teacher for the next 21 years. Or as he would tell you, I was his student teacher for 22 years. <laughs> During that time, we developed a wonderful relationship. Being a friend may have been the greatest impact Roger had on the Fredonia community. If you needed a hand with anything, the person to go to was Roger. He was a compassionate and generous man that was dedicated to serving others. He had a great sense of humor and a quick wit, and you often left the room still laughing at a one-liner or a joke that he may have said. When the committee came together to establish the criteria for the Memorial Scholarship, we wanted candidates that exhibit the same qualities as Roger. We put emphasis on involvement in school, community, and volunteer activities. The committee feels that the recipients of this year's scholarship truly embody those qualities that Roger stood for. The recipients have been involved in the Sperlonia School community through music, athletics, student government, clubs, and honor societies. The recipients have been extremely dedicated to community service through youth athletics clinics and camps, church activities, and volunteering for various organizations and activities such as the Lakeshore Humane Society, uh, the Fall Sweep, and cleaning up after what used to be known as Fred Fest. After interviewing the candidates, the committee felt the recipients had a real passion for helping others and serving their communities and would continue to do so throughout their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to announce that the recipients of the 2022 Roger Pecos Memorial Scholarship are Nicholas Creeley, Jillian Reed, Gabe Schrader, and Aaron Schrentz. Please join me on stage. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good afternoon again. Members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Ziliox, Principal Paschke, Assistant Principal Lauer, teachers, faculty, honored guests, friends, family, and my graduates. Once again, my name is Erin Schrantz, and I am the salutatorian of the Fredonia High School graduating class of 2022. It is my honor and privilege to give the salutatory address to all of you this afternoon. Who are we, the class of 2022? Well, we're the class to notoriously lose all field trip privileges. <laughs> Unless, of course, you consider a drive down the road two miles to SUNY Fredonia and an in-depth tour of the art department a field trip. We're the class that historically initiated the cafeteria's largest food fight as eighth graders. Of course, it occurred on the one day that I was not in lunch, but I could hear the rowdiness from a nearby classroom. We're the class that our middle school teachers were relieved to say farewell to, although some of them would never admit it. However, we are also a class that overcame adversity despite the challenges the world threw at us. We're a class that was extremely well-rounded and talented, despite a lack of motivation to excel at times. Senioritis will get you. We are a class that had to be leaders without four in-person years of high school to prepare us. We went to school with only half of our half of the alphabet, A through K and L through Z. We faked jumping jacks behind a screen and attended meetings to plan events that had a chance of not happening at all. We were persistent. It was hard for me to sit and write a speech like this without sounding cliche. However, my prompt was to talk about the challenges that we faced, and it wouldn't provide an accurate depiction of our time here if I failed to bring up the pandemic since it affected nearly all four of our high school years. It could have been very, very easy for our graduates to, this year to look at their high school careers and talk only about what was taken from them. Dances were missed. Sports seasons were canceled a week in. Our school musical was postponed, which was only a more hopeful, ambitious word for canceled a week before opening. It seemed like we were just coming up short of something great before a virus came and took it all away. At that moment, there were two options, push or be pushed. We as a class, with the help of a supportive staff of adults and our friends and families, decided that pushing was the only option. The next year, we were one of the only schools around to put on a musical. We won sports titles, we had a prom. None of this would have been possible without the mental toughness and endurance that I believe characterized our class. Furthermore, as much as the pandemic did take things away, it also gave us new relationships and opportunities for self-discovery. All right, enough about the pandemic. I think we can all agree it's time to move forward. Setback is a word that we're all familiar with. When I looked up the term, I couldn't help but hone in on one particular definition, defeat. Just defeat. This gives way to the belief that a setback will hold us down and keep us there. This, my fellow graduates, brings me to my main point. With everything you do, there will be times of trial. That's just the way that life works out. Good and bad, while polar opposites, they work hand in hand, and they create the journey that's our lives. If you do let your setbacks hold you down and keep you there, you'll never move forward on the pathway to success. It is inevitable that you will take a wrong turn, but sometimes those wrong turns lead to a pathway of new possibilities. Be kind to others and to yourself, and in doing so, you will achieve the highest form of success, which is that of true happiness. We are all put on this earth for a reason. We all have something special to contribute to this world. You have a purpose, and your potential is overflowing. This potential will be unlocked as long as you don't let your setbacks define you. If there's anything that I've learned over my high school years, it's that some of our greatest periods of growth occur after times of disappointment and discouragement. So. Maybe we should start thinking of setbacks more like set forwards. As we've reached the end and our high school careers are over, we can reflect on our past as a class and recognize all that we have gotten through collectively. High school wasn't simply a start and end point. It was everything in between, all of the memories, the laughs, the trials, the acceptance, and the recovery 
that made the journey worthwhile. Though we may part physically, we will mentally always be connected through these cherished memories. Yes, our high school days have run out, but we have bright futures ahead of us. And I'm confident that each of you, class of 2022, will go out and pave your own path to greatness. Thank you. and welcome. Thank you to everyone who is here today, including Superintendent Dr. Ziliox, Principal Mr. Paschke, Assistant Principal Mr. Lauer, and the members of the Board of Education. I'm giving a special thank you to the parents and families because I speak for many of us when I say that we wouldn't be who we are without you. My name is Eva Rose Wink and I'm the valedictorian of the class of 2022. I'm so happy to be here today, just like my mother was before me as she was the valedictorian of the class of 1993 at Ripley Central School. It has been a goal of mine to be standing here today, ever since I was probably four years old and I found out what a valedictorian was. I can't believe I have achieved this honor, following in the footsteps of my mom.
The butterfly effect is a theory in which something seemingly small and insignificant can lead to something huge. The flap of a butterfly's wing can create a hurricane. My mother, by chance, saw an advertisement in her sophomore year of college for a set of videos called Your Baby Can Read. Years later, I was born and she happened to remember seeing that, and so I watched and learned from those videos. Then my mom found out that only at one year old, I could read. Flash forward to kindergarten. Less than a month into the year, it was decided that I would move up into first grade, skipping kindergarten. This decision led to further opportunities, and it has taken years of dedication and believing myself to get up here today. But when you think about it, who knows where I would be today if one insignificant thing, such as seeing an ad in a magazine, had never happened. Everyone here today has a great future ahead of them. Don't be discouraged if you don't know where you're going, or if you don't have a perfect map laid out in front of you. Maybe a butterfly will come along and nudge you in the right direction. You never know. But what I'm really trying to say is, don't be afraid to take a chance or make a choice. Deep down, you know what you need to do. At the beginning of this school year, I made one of the biggest decisions of my life, and it had nothing to do with college. For years, I had been trapped in a negative and harmful environment that didn't allow me to enjoy my greatest passion. I chose to finally leave that environment behind, and before doing so, I had never realized I could have support and encouragement from the people around me. This year has been the best year of my life so far and it's because I got out of that cave. I'm confident and happy, and cutting out negativity has only helped me grow. I don't know what moment might have led me to end up in that situation, but what matters is where I am now, and that I'm truly happy. So if you are led to, for example, a job that is a negative and unhealthy environment, or you realize that your college major isn't really what you want to do, remember that if you are unhappy, it's not where you need to be. Sometimes to run is the strong thing, and you know when it's time to go. My advice to all of you is to make that leap, take that chance. When you know deep inside what you need to do, don't let fear stop you. Don't let the uncertainty of the future stop you. You will end up where you need to be if you follow your gut and believe in yourself. There are endless opportunities and endless realities that decisions and change can take you to. Tony Stark once said, part of the journey is the end. Today might be the end of our journey here at Fredonia Central School, but it's only the beginning of a new one. Wherever the butterflies lead you, make your mark and be who you want to be. As I've been told a million times, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. So fly away, find your place, and never give up. Thank you.
and a former student of mine. She obtained her Bachelor of Science degree with honors from John Carroll University in University Heights, Ohio, where she also played soccer. In 2016, she obtained her medical degree from Ross University School of Medicine after spending time learning in Dominica, Miami, Chicago, and Chattanooga. Her pediatric residency was completed through the University at Buffalo where she just finished her final year of Pediatric Emergency Medicine Fellowship. She is board certified in general pediatrics and is board eligible in pediatric emergency medicine. Her special interests include being a medical student and resident education, travel, and, as you can tell, anything pink. <laughs> it is with great pride and honor that I present the 2022 commencement keynote speaker, Dr. Sarah De Palma. Sarah. Thank you, Principal Paschke, for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Fredonia High School graduation. As previously stated, my name is Sarah De Palma, and I am a 2006 graduate from Fredonia High School. It is an honor to be addressing this year's graduating class. I have to admit, I was kind of taken aback when Assistant Principal Lauer and Principal Paschke asked me to deliver this address. I wondered, who am I to give this speech? I was not sure I had much to offer, felt a lot of pressure, but I remembered I have no idea who spoke at my graduation. Not high school, not college, not even medical school, and suddenly I felt a lot better. <laughs> I don't expect you to remember anything I say today, but I hope you remember how you feel in this moment. Feel proud. Proud of yourself for accomplishing this goal. Feel happy, you earned this moment. Feel extraordinary, not everyone gets to this point. Feel special. Taylor Swift spoke at NYU, Olympian Allison Felix at the University of Southern California, and recently the President of the United States spoke at the University of Delaware, and you graduates get me, a girl from Fredonia herself. But in all seriousness, I did want to discuss some important life lessons I've learned since graduation that I hope you carry forward. I was going to stay on theme and list 22 lessons since it's 2022, but I figured that seemed a bit excessive. Instead, I settled on eight. Eight because it's my favorite number, my birth month August, and it was also the number of minutes I, told, I was told I should aim to speak for. So let us begin. Eight life lessons I've learned since graduation. Number one, your high school friends can be lifelong friends. Look at the people next to you. These people have shaped who you are today and have become a big part of your life. Don't lose touch with them. I still talk to every single one of my high school friends. When my older brother passed away unexpectedly from melanoma at 30 years old during my fourth year of medical school, my friends sent me monthly reminders for an entire year to let me know that they were thinking of me. They all hold a special place in my heart for their kind gen generosity and because they are a subset of people who share memories with my brother as well. Cherish the friendships you currently have, even as you make new ones. Number two, go after your dreams. I knew from a young age I wanted to be a physician. I grew up in a family of doctors and nurses and spent a decent amount of my childhood in and out of hospitals with my grandparents. So I was no stranger to that hospital way and that disagreeable hospital smell. I had several people tell me not to pursue pediatrics. They told me it's too hard to see sick kids. The parents will be miserable to deal with. It doesn't make as much money as the other specialties. 
Despite receiving this unsolicited advice, I trudged ahead determined more than ever to not let those comments deter me. This unsolicited advice made me more determined because I knew that if I did not do pediatrics, I would not be happy. We spend a lot of time in the United States at work. I did not want to dread going into work every day, and I don't want that for you either. Number three, remember you will hit speed bumps along the way to accomplishing your goals. I didn't get into my first choice medical school. In fact, I ended up taking two years off between college and medical school. At the time, I was devastated. Reflecting now, I wouldn't change any part of my journey. I cherished the opportunities I had not getting what I thought I wanted. I spent 16 months away studying medicine in Dominica, a third world country. Away from family and friends, I became much more independent. I felt and saw medicine from the ground up without the incessant whirl of machines and got to know my country better. Meeting a ton of incredible people doing rotations across the United States. Further, once I even got into medical school, I even remember one specific physician telling me I would never get into an emergency medicine program in Buffalo if I went to a Caribbean school. I use those words as motivation and am proud to say I just graduated from my three-year pediatric emergency medicine fellowship through the University at Buffalo this week. <laughs> Number four, draw your own conclusions about people based upon your interactions with an individual. In middle school, in high school, it was far too easy to follow the crowd and judge others based on what was said about them. But I challenge you to form your own opinions. I promise you will be pleasantly surprised. In fact, one of my greatest pleasures in life was learning that people I may have judged early are truly much more interesting and fuller human beings than my preconceptions. Number five, be kind to everyone. You are not better than anyone else. Everyone has an important role to play in this world. I remember my hairstylist once commenting that my job was so much more important than hers because I was saving lives and she was just cutting hair. I beg to differ. Her expertise allows me to function, makes me happy, and permits me to feel presentable in my everyday life. Number six, embrace the different. Different people, different cultures, different foods. We all have a different journey and come from different backgrounds. This is very powerful, as there is so much we can learn from one another. In college, I had the incredible opportunity to study abroad in Italy. I remember some of my classmates refusing to join the group at dinner because they didn't want to try the traditional Italian food. Don't miss out on trying new things and enjoying life's adventures. If there's one thing I want for all of you, it's never to experience regret. Number seven. Find the moments in life that are cell phone free. I think we can all agree at this point that cell phones are basically our fifth limb. I don't go anywhere without mine. It comes with me to work, in the bathroom, it's under my pillow at night while I'm sleeping. We are accessible to calls, texts, emails, ex essentially 24 seven. At this point, I'm striving for moments in life that are cell phone free. Times where I don't think about my cell phone and am just present in the moment. I have found these moments for me riding on a jet ski, attending a concert, traveling, enjoying a good conversation with friends and family. And I encourage you all to find your cell phone free moments as well. Lastly, number eight, popsicles and stickers make the world go round. As a pediatrician, I could not agree more with this statement. Recently during the pandemic, we are seeing up to 30 year olds in the emergency department at Oshai Children's Hospital. As a pediatrician, I'm trained to see up to 21 years old, but I'm required to stabilize adults if they walk into the children's hospital before we transfer them over to the adult facility. However, when the adult hospitals were bursting at the seams, trying to keep up with the demands of sick people, our group was asked to lend a helping hand. I remember vividly a 28-year-old male who came in for abdominal pain. He reportedly had no medical problems, but unfortunately, we found several that day. He ultimately needed to be admitted to the hospital for further management, and in order to do so, we needed to obtain a COVID test. He was very nervous about COVID test, being COVID tested, but don't you worry, I reassured him that the three-year-old next door did a fabulous job. In the end, I gave him a popsicle and a sticker as well. I mean, we all deserve the joys of childhood, even when we get older. I wish you all the best in your journey to becoming contributing members of society. I hope you learn these important lessons even sooner than I did. 
It has been a privilege and a pleasure to address you this afternoon from the very same stage that I looked towards just 16 years ago. In closing, I would like to leave you with one final thought from the many adventures of Winnie, of Winnie the Pooh, because I couldn't help myself. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Congratulations to the FHS graduating class of 2022. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Serkiu, and it has been an honor serving as the Class of 2022 President this year. I would like to take a moment to thank all of the people who have assisted us to get to this monumental point in our lives. Dr. Ziliox, Dr. Wright, Mr. Paschke, Mr. Lauer, Mr. Aldrich, and the Board of Education, as well as every teacher, administrator, and staff member at Fredonia. You have shown us continuous support during our time here. Your words of advice, extra help, and encouragement over the years have not gone unnoticed. We appreciate you. To all of the family members, in attendance or not, we truly would not be here without you. The sacrifices you have made for us and the dedication shown to make sure we succeed is admired and we do not take that for granted. I could go on, but just know all of us graduating here today are extremely thankful for everyone in our lives that have led us to this point. To my fellow classmates, whether you have attended Fredonia since preschool, this year, or any time in between, you have something to be proud of. All of us have grown so much and achieved many things during our time here. Today is meant to celebrate us and our accomplishments, so let's look back on some of the highlights we have experienced. From elementary field days to third grade recorder recitals and successful varsity sports seasons and sold out high school musical performances, Everyone here has something to be recognized for. Our grade is full of outstanding athletes that have been crucial members of several teams that have ranked high across their leagues, the section, and or the state. There are also numerous accolades and awards graduates present have been chosen to represent over the years. Some of these include being selected for our various honor societies, department students of the year, or extracurricular acknowledgments for exceptional achievement. Academically, our class was recognized by a current teacher as, and I quote, one of the best classes as far as grades and regents results in his career. This statement can be supported by the fact that 59 students here received an 85% or higher in seven semesters of high school. Out of those 59, 43 students are finishing seven semesters with a 90% or better. This is quite impressive when realizing that the class of 2022 is such a small group for Fredonia. We all know that high school didn't pan out the way we would have imagined walking into freshman year. All of us truly have something to be, look back and be proud of. Every setback encountered, no matter the impact, helped shape us into who we are today. We would not be the same without these experiences that made us stronger individuals in the end. What was accomplished by our class with the circumstances given is no small task, and that needs to be recognized. As we leave, I thought it would be interesting to hear from the people who have seen it all, our teachers. One teacher said, it is a little bittersweet seeing you guys go since you were the first class I had for a full year and the first class I've seen through from freshman year to senior year. Another told me, I know your class has a bright future ahead because you are all driven to succeed. These encounters are only a few of many, all describing how proud they are of us to complete such an amazing accomplishment. You can see from these remarks that we have made an impact that will not be forgotten by members of our school as we transition into this next stage of life, whether it is college, the workforce, the military, or any pathway imaginable. One last educator wrote, you have all made me proud to claim you as one of my students and my dragon slayers. As we move on to this next chapter and go our separate ways, don't forget the lessons you have learned during high school and how much they changed you for the better. I cannot wait to see what the future has in store, and I know we will all do great things. Thank you and congratulations.
At this time, it is my pleasure and privilege to begin the awarding of high school diplomas to the members of the class of 2022. Will the candidates please rise? <clears throat> Will the candidates please rise? <laughs> Mrs. Davis and Mr. Romans, please introduce the candidates. Mackenzie Lillian Abbey. Ashlyn Cadence Ambrose. Carson L. Kane. Lila Elizabeth Cameron. Owen T. Caserta. Brody J. Cave. <laughs> Sally Chen. <laughs> Derek M. Clark. <laughs> Connor I. L. Clary. Tatiana Cologne. Joshua David Copeland. Mauricio Isaiah Coronado. Nicholas Scott Creeley. Cameron Walter Crowell. Simon Thomas Davis. Dylan A. DeJesus Skelly. Keegan R. DeJohn. Rory Scott Dillon. Sean M. Farnham. Alexander J. Field. Kinnan Cole Finnegan. Anthony F. Fitzgerald. Jack Powell Fortna. Jack's diploma will be presented by his mother, Board of Education member, Lisa Powell Fortna. Shelby Lynn Genovese. Owen G. Gilbert. Juliana L. Gloniak. Caleb D. Gornikevich. Fred Edwards Gullo. Fred's diploma will be presented by his grandfather, former Board of Education President Joseph Gullo. <clears throat> A 
Ashley Robin Helwig. Jimmy J. Hooten. Taylor Nicole Highland. Cadence Elizabeth Jaffrey. Samuel T. Koski. Matthew Maxwell Carer. Carson T. Kuzdal. Hallie Renee Larido. Ethan Thomas Lead. Matthew C. Linder. Jonathan Matthew Long. Matthew James Lauder. Owen A. Ludwig. Owen's diploma will be presented by his grandfather, former Board of Education President, Andrew Christina. Bryn Adair McGregor. Cameron S. Mages. Aiden Tanner Mazzani. Devon J. McCall. Luke Reed McNatt. Riley James Miller. Victoria Lynn Miller. Kiara Sky Noel Mansour. Nino Scali Morales Ortiz. Benjamin William Morrow. Brendan T. Nero. Cameron Wallace Newman. Alexander E. Paluk. Lucas T. Pelka. Trevor Paul Persh. Rebecca Lynn Petey. Irene Poloni. Carolyn G. Presbition. Jonathan Drake Pascar. Jillian Michelle Reed. Joshua M. Reynolds.
Zachary Allen Roberts. William M. Rose. Gabriel Ellis Salem. Janisha Lee Santana Bonilla. Gabriel S. Schrader. Aaron Elizabeth Schrantz. Ashley E. Schroeder. Lauren Veronica Sercu. Victoria A. Spachapoli. Ayana Bree Stephanie. Emily Elizabeth Timmerman. Ladraith Amid Velez Omo. Lee Bain Waller. Zachary Owen Walnicki. <laughs> Kayla J. Warner. <laughs> Kylie Marie Waterman. <laughs> Aiden Matthew Weber. Nicholas Jean Whitfield, Jr. Jaden M. Whitfield Macy. Eva Rose Marie Wink. Emma Noel Wilkins. Emma I. Willebrandt. Francesca A. O. Wilson. Abigail Grace Ray. <laughs> Nevea P. Zedzilka. Please join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2022. Let's do this again. Will the candidates please rise? Yeah. The faculty and administration of the Fredonia Central School District have verified that you have successfully completed the prescribed course of high school study for the state of New York. Therefore, 
by the power vested in me by the State of New York and the Board of Education, I hereby award you a high school diploma. You can move your tassel from right to left. Congratulations. Will the graduates please be seated? Good afternoon. My name is Fred Gullo, and it has been my pleasure to serve as student body president for Fredonia High School in 2022. I'd like to thank the Board of Education, Dr. Ziliox, Dr. Wright, Mr. Paschke, Mr. Lauer, and everyone else who led us to this point in our lives. As this day got closer and closer, it dawned on me that my life was about to change, drastically. The lasts came very quickly. The last musical, the last concert, the last field trip, the last class, the last exam. While I moved past a lot of these with no problem, there were a few that really caused me some panic. It was a sucker punch of sadness that I didn't see coming. To get this feeling of finality off my mind, I did what any reasonable person would do. I ate a bunch of junk food and started a brand new TV series. <laughs> After 40 episodes of How I Met Your Mother, and 1.9 pounds of Sour Patch Kids. You know, the bag like this, right? I felt like the main character, Ted Mosby, was speaking directly to me when he said, sometimes, even if you know how something is going to end, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy the ride. We knew that high school was going to end, and as bumpy and unexpected as it may have been, we still found a way to enjoy the ride. Even out of context, this quote is relatable, applicable, and should be used in our everyday lives. Something I learned in high school about enjoying the ride is choosing to spend time doing things I want to do rather than what I feel like I have to do. I'm not talking about shirking responsibilities or anything like that. What I'm describing is the feeling that you are obligated to follow a certain path just because you have to, and not because it brings you joy. Over the past four years, we filled our schedules and packed our days doing the things we thought we should be doing. But recently, there have been times when I ask myself, is doing this making me happy? And if the answer was no, I asked myself a second question. Am I willing to take a risk and change course? These are big questions, and they aren't easy to face. There may not be an easy answer, and it may be even harder to try something new. But I think that if we fill our life doing things that make us happy and proud, we will enjoy the ride that much more. Sometimes the ride is rough, and our class learned that together. Opportunities can be taken away from us at any time by no fault of our own. We learned that we don't always know when we could be doing something for the last time, that a sports season can come to an end before it even starts, that a musical can be shut down days before opening night, that school will not open for the next few months. The question is, how can we continue to enjoy the ride when these unexpected and unavoidable obstacles present themselves? Now, I'm the last person to admit that our Zoom school days were enjoyable or to overlook how devastating it was to be deprived of a normal high school experience. But I need to be honest. Playing Super Sluggers, Madden, and 2K in between classes five days a week was a funny, unique experience. 
We wouldn't have memories like those if it weren't for the bumps on our ride. We wouldn't have been able to host a sectional championship on our home court because Buff State wasn't an option. We wouldn't have witnessed Mr. Bennett become a tech wizard, editing our laggy audio recordings into impressive performances, or had the opportunity to turn our mics off and laugh through the school day with our friends. In the face of all the doom and gloom in the world, we turned our living rooms into classrooms, our driveways into home courts, and our basements into practice rooms. Although we missed out on the normal path, we found a way to allow adversity and joy to coexist, and that is how we continue to enjoy our ride. Losing so many opportunities taught us that there are no guarantees in life, well, except for death, taxes, and Mr. Newell's four good jokes. Well, <laughs> whatever the next disaster is, we're going to be ready for it, and better yet, we're going to have a heck of a time making it our own along the way. We know our time is precious. Let's seize each day and each opportunity. Check in now and then and ask yourself if you're happy and proud of what you're doing. If you aren't, have the courage to change course. When faced with adversity, which will happen again and again, find a way to find some joy. And above all else, follow this last piece of advice from Ted Mosby. For the most part, if you're really honest with yourself about what you want out of life, it gives it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much.